so there had already been such a massive amount of new information. My brain had trouble keeping up. Staying in anonymity at my aunt's and uncle's wasn't an option anymore, not with Blackie making a scene like that. Rumors would probably travel quick. We had to go hide somewhere, possibly in some forests. But Craddock told me. She told me a lot of things, honestly. Once she gets talking, she doesn't shut up. She told me there weren't any forests around to hide in, and I should go to the city. I didn't want to, until I heard where I actually was. So then the decision was quick. Boop. This is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell. Episode 28 Tradition and Ritual The silence of the room expanded until a servant, the same one who had brought Nadak the soup, opened the door. He peeped in, the white around his eyes growing more stark at the sight of Blackie's head poking through the destroyed window. Shouting in the background forced Nadak to wonder how many people had seen the dragon. Guts. If this is a closely populated area, this might have attracted an audience. She slapped away a tingle of panic. Other things were more important. The intensifying connection with Blackie. Crydex ramble about the lines. She needed to hear more, but her furiousness didn't allow to ask about that. For now. Oh, Nady, Crydek finally said. She cringed at the look Neda gave her. Never call me that again. You have no right to use my name that way. I, I'll try to forgive me if I misspeak. I'm so used to hearing your mother say it. Neda snorted. The snort conveyed a multitude of emotions. Sadness for the mention of her mother, anger for this conversation, hopelessness for this whole situation, unbelief for her aunt's obvious lack of understanding, ridicule for asking forgiveness for this small feat and not all the rest. Crydek glanced at Stetum, who had been staring at Blackie and Petat, his head swiveling from dragon to gorwak. Blackie ignored him, content with her head on the table. But Touch didn't. He pulled a different face each time Stephen's eyes fell on him. Damn, you look as if your head is about to fall off. Perhaps you should go outside and put everyone at ease. Crydek nodded towards the servant who was still peeking in the room through the half-open door. She followed Stetum with her eyes as he walked outside on unsteady legs. Don't worry, we live outside of the city, and we have walls. There aren't many neighbors who could have seen this. There are only our servants. Nidak started. The words were obviously aimed at her, but how had she known it was something Nidak had been thinking of? Logical deduction? Or something else? She felt as if she couldn't trust herself anymore. Her thoughts were certainly a mess. There had been too much information at once. An unexpected hug pulled Nedek back out of her thoughts. Shanks well up! She knew she was supposed to return the embrace, but her arm stayed plastered in her lap. A hug wasn't going to fix her anger. He never wanted to do it, Crydex said silently in Nadek's ears. Crying? We never wanted to. We always thought it would have been better to tell you the truth, instead of this elaborate plan. It wasn't only you who was being put at risk, but us too. She let go and sat back down, wiping her eyes. I've always wanted to remain in an amenity. The royal life wasn't for me. I was happy enough to stay in the background when Yodak was still the heir. But when he suddenly disappeared and it was all going to fall on my head, literally so, 
and knew I had to get out. I'd rather say goodbye to everything I knew than have it to bear the responsibility. And it worked. When I came back with Steedham, people on the street never mentioned me anymore. Mirak Sikuchi came to me one day, about half a year before her crown receival. She'd been telling me they were having trouble conceiving. The day Mira came here, I knew she had something important to say. She confided that she had found a way to skip to Earth about a year earlier. Somehow the healers there had helped her to get pregnant. At first I didn't believe it. Earth was a myth. She gave me the gift of chocolate. It was incredible. I still remember the first time I tried it. A twinkle in her shiny eyes proved her remembrance. She said she'd give me all the knowledge to produce chocolate and build a blooming business out of it. On one condition. I had to promise to take care of you if something happened to them. She said she'd changed the instructions yearly. And so she did. I thought it was all a bit silly and paranoid. It had been so long, I never thought it was actually going to happen. But every year she brought me two boxes, one with instructions for us, the other the gift to you after a designated amount of time. The red night rouse had been completely their plan. We jeopardized our safety and anonymity to protect you. To protect me? You mean to have a chocolate business to make money, not to protect me? Craddock flinched. That's not how it was. Whatever you want to believe, the fact is we did it. So that's that. It's probably already too late for us. I believe they'll come for us soon. Searching for you. That's why you need to go. Steedham explained it in an unfortunate way. He didn't mean it so harshly. We care. We do. But we know this isn't safe for you. They'll find you. Especially now. We don't have that many servants here. And our chocolate production is elsewhere. But they are gossips. They'll talk about the dragon. Perhaps even the gold rock. We'll do everything we can to buy their silence. But it might not be enough. Oh... There is so much I wish I could tell you, but we should get ready. I am afraid a bath won't be possible at this moment. I'll give you dresses, money and my most trusted servant, Melia. I suggest you make your way to the city and hide there until the day of the crown. With a few full purses and the dresses, you can pass for a wealthy merchant. Wealthy enough to afford a good room in a decent inn. I'm really sorry I can't do more. We'll have our own mess to clean up here. Nida had let her talk. She saw the sincerity in her aunt's face. Despite her earlier feelings and an ever-lingering smolder of anger, she trusted her, although she couldn't help the sarcasm in her voice. Good speech. I can't go in the city, though. There's no way to take Blackie and Patat with me. Besides, it doesn't make sense to get into a city. Better to hide away in a forest until the crown appears on my little head. She moved her hands around her head. You've got that snarkiness from your mother. Yes, I'd advise against taking them. And even your cat. Whatever you do, don't walk him outside where people can see him. It would be too much of a novelty. As for the other two... I might have a solution, but I need to talk to Steedham first. The only issue would be sneaking them in. If only we had Jodak's line of deception. But no matter, we'll find a way. Little help though it may be, I will give you that. She leaned forward and grabbed Nedek's hand, who pulled hers back. Even though Nedek had calmed down, she was still upset. But the constant stream of information kept her from focusing on the anger. The lines of deception, 
she mused. Something tickled in the back of her mind. She breathed in sharply. Why me? I mean, pay you in. He can do the squares and triangles thing. What's up with that? You said he's not related. How could he have power? Craddock tsked. Her face showed disapproval. Your parents really should have taught you all of this. It was the wrong decision to wait. But they wanted to uphold tradition and keep you safe. Traditionally, the heir who is bound to receive the crown would be prepped starting three years earlier. No, let me speak. I know it sounds odd. Royalty should get prepared from the moment they're born, right? That's how they do it in other kingdoms. In parallel, all siblings get a basic education. The crown receiver gets an extra education, and that is mostly to teach them about the powers they're bound to receive. Your parents were going to start teaching you about three years ago, but then they passed away. I always thought they should have introduced you to this world from childhood, but anyway, they had their own silly reasons. As for that fool, Pedrin, no one who doesn't have the birthright can sit on the throne without a proper ritual, handing over the intent for them to become the crown receiver. So, when your parents died, certain people somehow knew about that ritual and performed it with fool Pedrin. It's complicated, and I don't know the details about how it all works and what it does exactly. I assume the ritual grounds the serper one of the lines. I think he should lose it once you get the crown. That was again a much larger explanation than Nidek had thought she'd get. Nidek's aunt certainly liked to talk, even in situations like this. Krade continued. To come back to what you said previously, there are no forests in which you'll be able to hide in this area. Besides, I don't want you to live in discomfort. You've had a hard enough time as it was. And I am certain it is the best idea to be in the city when the day comes, nice and clean, looking like a proper queen. That way you can have the people validate you straight away. And you can make that fool look like a genuine fool. Nirak had only been listening with half an ear, her thoughts still on what Craddock had said earlier. However, she perked up at the last sentences. What? The city? Pedrin is in the city you mentioned before? Her skin crawled. I should have asked this before. Where exactly are we? Oh, well, I thought you'd have guessed by now. We're only half an hour walk from the walls of Exaco, Parallelo's capital city. I told you I came back here after my travels. I couldn't live in the city, of course, but I found a nice secluded mansion not too far away, and... Kaida kept babbling on, oblivious of Nedek's shock. She really should have figured it out earlier. But her brain was too overloaded. It had trouble keeping up. The capital city of Parallelogram. So close to Wani. Staying hidden in the forest did seem like a bad idea now. She should go into city and go check things out. After all. It was going to be her new home, right? For now, she conveniently ignored that there were people trying to kill her, and they were probably in the city. Besides, perhaps she could figure out more of them there. Rumors were always in abundance if you knew where to look for them. She tapped the table and booped Kitty on the nose. It was time to discover her capital city. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 28, Tradition and Ritual. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedek.
written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe. Hello, hello. Chapter 28. Eight. Other thing. Forgive me if I misspeak. Um, fuck. Ah! Fuck sake. Okay. She followed Stephen with her eyes as he walked outside on unsteady Institute. That was weird. We jeopardized our safety and anonymity. We jeopardized our safety and anonymity. Staying in anonymity, anonymity at my aunt's and staying in anonymity. My cat is eating. Hey, what for? Can you not eat now? For your information, listeners, I record this in the spare room, which is actually the cat's room. So that is where the cat's food is, and that's why he decides now to eat. You done? Nope, not done. <sighs> you done? Not done. The mic might not even pick it up. Alright, that sounded stupid. They had their own silly la- They had their own silly reasons. Reasons. What the fuck is this? Whoop. Whoop, whoop. There are no forests here in which you will be able to have uh, uh, too much chance of discovery. Now oh, let's just whoop. away with you. She perked up at that last sentence. She perked up at the last. We're only half an hour walk from the walls of Hexago. Parallelos cap. For now, she conveniently ignored the. Bleh.